This is a story about chocolate. Not just any chocolate. It's about the very best chocolate in the world and the dream of one man to produce it. All the way from bean to bar. This is the story of Willie Harcourt Coos and his chocolate factory. The harvest at Willie's 1,000-acre cocoa farm in Venezuela has been huge. We've never had a moment where we've had sack of cacao on every single tree. I mean, it's monumental. The best beans in the world are on their way to him in Tiverton, where he's planning to turn them into a range of chocolate products. Will, can you give us a hand? I do remember her saying to me, you better get it effing right. <laughs> But nothing works if the flavour of the 100% chocolate isn't perfect, and Willie and the family are about to be put through a tough test. It's make or break. Will it work? Will it won't work? There's an enormous amount of jeopardy in it. If Willie is to have any chance of convincing the public that his is the best chocolate in the world, he first of all has to convince the experts. And in a highly competitive market, that's a tall order. He's managed to secure a meeting with a champion chocolatier, and this will be a crucially important test. To give himself the best chance of impressing, he's experimenting with a range of different roasts. Today is an exciting day for me. It took me a while to get an appointment with William Curley. He's one of our great chocolatiers. If we're riding a chocolate wave, he's a chocolatier. That's definitely on the top of it. I sent him a couple of bars just tantalising with him, and then he agreed. So I only had that little preliminary, and he likes the flavour notes. They were his words. If I can get the likes of William Curley to buy my chocolate, um, I, you know, I really am off to a good start. So that's the Rio Caribe, yep. and the other one's a Carinero. OK, yeah. let's have another little taste. They've got two distinct flavours. OK. Um, and one of these, you've roasted a little bit more? And one of the bars is a little bit of a full roast. I'm just playing around there, because that mm. obviously develops flavours, but then mm. also, you know, it changes they're, they're the flavour. Very powerful, powerful flavour coming through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I like, I like the, the flavour profile a lot. There's a little bit too much texture. Uh, You've obviously not conscious chocolate, have you? I've not conscious it yet, and I've not refined it either. It's going to go through a three-row refinement. For me, it's got lots of potential. Yeah. Uh, you're going to sell it in this format, so 100% uh, yeah, chocolate. Yeah, same as that. I mean, it will be tempered, so mm -hmm. you won't get this slight it's a bit blooming. More shiny. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a bit more yeah. shiny. I guess my concern is, is, is the market ready to have a, a product uh, as unrefined right. as this? Uh, but I will refine it. It's going to be okay. It's good texture-wise. It'll, it'll be more smooth. More, more smooth, and okay. it'll also be tempered. Both those okay. things. Okay. Uh, okay, well, yeah. uh, I think the best thing to do uh, is let's get cooking. I'm with you. So I'm now going to make a ganache. I can't wait. Which will come in turn to be a chocolate truffle. Yeah. Uh, and what we've basically got for that, we've got some whipping cream. Right. We have a little bit of inverted sugar. We have some unsalted butter. We have uh, a medium strength chocolate. It's a 65% chocolate, which comes from Venezuela and Madagascar. Right. And of course, I have your 100% uh, Beautiful. Rio Carib. Yeah. The rough you know. diamond, perhaps we could call her. The rough diamond. <laughs> so you boiled the cream. Yeah, absolutely. And now that was a double cream, was it? No. No, that was shipping cream. I do what I'm doing now. This is this is really going to give us the real. It's going to give us the real answer to right. your chocolate. Okay. We're going to find we're going to find out if it's the real deal one. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm just basically emulsifying all the ingredients together, so it should become nice and smooth and shiny. Let me just take the butter. All right. OK, so this is the ganache in its purest form. Well, that looks beautiful. Liquid gold. OK, so we'll have a little taste of this now, Will. OK, let's, um, let's find out, shall we? You're looking a little bit nervous there. <laughs> Huge amount of flavour coming out. Uh, Maybe not as smooth as I'd like it to be, mm -hmm. but this is like what we said earlier about the refining. Uh, 
huge flavour coming yeah. from this chocolate. Mm. Yeah. You've got a good flavour out there. Mm. Mm. I have to say, I do like it. So, Willie, uh, as, you, as you can see, the ganache is now starting to firm up. Mm. Uh, and what we're going to do, we're going to just pipe it onto the, the silicon uh, paper. We'll allow it to firm up completely, then we'll cut it and we're going to dip it in the chocolate and roll it in the cocoa powder. Lovely. Take the ganache and we just run it along the tray. Beautiful. Nice and silky, nice and smooth. Nice and straight. It's because I wasn't drinking it last night. Even. <laughs> so I'm now just going to cut these into individual truffles and then from here we'll roll them in the chocolate and dust them in the, the cocoa powder. Okay, well, so we're now going to dip the uh, the ganache and the couverture. One bad boy. And what about the good boys? The good boys, I think. <laughs> so, then you start to roll it in the, the cocoa powder. Cook it in a minute again. Work well. Got some really nice notes in there, no? Mm, nice flavours, nice, uh, nice aroma coming off it. Very round, isn't it? Beautiful, lingering flavour. The flavour profile is excellent. Flavour is obviously, ultimately, what it's all about. What it's all about, yeah. I'm being honest, I think he's got a good product. Uh, doesn't worry me, but me, he, ne he needs to refine it more to make it a bit more smoother and a bit more delicate on the palate. In its current format, I could only use it for cakes or biscuits or something that's maybe, uh, that it requires to be less refined. And I guess if he does refine it and, and he gives me a good price, I'd be more than happy to talk to him. I always knew that there was a, a, a refining aspect of it. I've got to have it finer. But, you know, what I'm really happy is that he likes the flavour, the flavour notes, you know. So I know I'm on the right track, because chocolate, after all, it's all about flavour. So it's fineness is something I can deal with. If you can get past someone like William Curley with your chocolate, you know, then I'm, I'm succeeding. He's a patisserie chef, chocolatier. I'm privileged to be walking in the same street with him. William Curley's approval may have been a boost to Willie, but it's also confirmed a suspicion he already had. The texture of his chocolate is not fine enough, and getting it right will mean more delays and more costs, which he cannot afford. With the beans on the way and interest growing in his product, Willie has to make sure he's in good shape to fulfill any orders that might come in. But this is to be no high-tech production line. The business is catastrophically short of money, and Willie's chocolate factory has to be put together from dilapidated machinery sought out and collected from all over Europe. He's a one-man industry with only his own sweat and determination to put the whole thing together on an industrial estate in Tiverton. You know, I made those calls, I surfed the net. I've been to Spain, to Germany, to France. I've been all over the place searching for machines. It was ironic that I found these 1920s machines. That was all I could afford. But at the same time, they were perfect for building a brand about making authentic chocolate. I'm talking about seven days a week. I'm talking about coming here at eight in the morning and going home at nine at night. I did that every day for four months, solidly. And I'm still working on it. <laughs> Just occasionally, when it's all been too much, he's called in the help of friends and neighbours. It is difficult. The machinery he's got in there is unbelievable. The trouble is they're getting the bits to get it all working right. I didn't see the children, I didn't really see Tanya. And it's seven days a week. I would just go, go, go. Put everything into it. It's a private life and everything's been on stop while he's doing this. It amazes me, really, that he's done what he's done with the factory. I saw the kit when it first arrived, and I'm just so impressed with him for what he's done. I mean, dismantle that machine so many times after dismantling it, I, I want to make chocolate. And now I'm ready for my next stage. It 
it's all about the plans of, of planning this factory. I'd wake up in the night and I'd think, yeah, that's where that goes. I'd, you know, and it was constantly, all the time, through anything I did during the day, I'd suddenly realise something would dawn on me. Right, we'll do that, we'll put that there, we'll, that'll work, that won't work, I've got to change that. You know, it was all that the planning is so important because if the manufacturing process is going to work well and stuff's going to roll off, I've got to have it right. Do you want, do you want to see me fire it up? When it's finished, the factory will take in the raw cocoa beans at one end, then it'll roast them, shell them, and then crush the beans to produce a liquor. It's this cocoa liquor which can be used to produce a chocolate bar or as a cooking ingredient for sweet and savory dishes, from truffles to chicken mole, from hot chocolate to risotto. Willie is running a batch of beans through the equipment to iron out any problems before his main batch arrives from Venezuela. On William Curley's advice, he's attempting to refine his product, but his current 1920s grinder is not up to the job, and the cocoa is simply not smooth enough. The grinder's not grinding fine enough. I've got I've realigned the stones inside the grinder, and it's still not grinding fine enough. I think the only answer is to get a refiner as well uh, to, to, to send it on to make it finer. And that's where I'm at, really. I was hoping I'd get away with it. I've got, it means more spending more cash. My real big problem now is, is finding this refiner. Because really, I, I can't move forward now without it. I mean, the whole thing's depressing, to be honest with you. To turn his dream into a business, Willie desperately needs to persuade people that his 100% cocoa bar is a suitable ingredient for a range of dishes, not just sweet, but savoury too. So just going to knock up something to eat. I'm going to make a little risotto. Not really much here, but I've got some porcini mushrooms, dry porcini. I'm going to put in a nice little handful of garlic. Right, so, got my garlic there. Some olive oil. Be quite liberal. Give it on the olive oil because some of it little, little sort of burns off, doesn't it? Not burns off, but comes off. Mmm, I smell those porcini. It reminds me of the funniest occasion when I had some mates down from London. We all had a bit of a boozy night, and the next day everyone wanted to go for a walk. So I take them up to the back, and it was just beautiful. There was deer, it was early in the morning, and we were looking for the first steps. I was feeling slightly hungover, and I just rather too quickly said, yeah, these are the right ones, and we collect these beautiful-looking, what I thought were sets, and got home, and I said, guys, I'm going to prepare you some mushrooms like you never had, I came out. Fried them in butter, and we just had the banquet for a breakfast. And, um, anyway, it's time to go. Everyone's got an early trip back to London. I've got them in the car, and, um, suddenly, you know, I just get that feeling, and it just comes... Whoop! and I projectile vomit all over the inside of my car. And I let the guy looks at me next to me and almost simultaneously goes like this. And we've and looked at each other. And, and then the guys in the back start vomiting as well. And then, and, then, and then he turns around, everyone turns around and goes, Will, we've got to go back to your house. So I drive everybody home. We all get into bed and we go to sleep. Unfortunately, it wasn't as serious. You know, poisoning. But uh, anyway, the joke is, yeah, let's go and spend the weekend with Will so he can kill us. <laughs> so a little bit of butter. I'm gonna fry that in now with my with my butter. Yeah. Drop that in there now. Now this is ready. I've just fried that off a little bit, that rice. I'm going to drop the mushrooms in and the juice. Now, I tell you what, what would just work a treat is a bit of cocoa. If I just grate probably a nice, healthy tablespoon in, you know, I'm going to pour in some more chicken stock, a little bit by little bit. Yeah, so I'll just carry on cooking that for another 10, 15 minutes, stir in a little grated parmesan, and it's ready.
Willy and Tanya are running short of money and badly need to work out the best way to sell their chocolate to the public. One idea they've had is a chocolate drink. They're calling it the Choc Shock, which they say gives you energy without putting on weight. Tanya's been on the Choc Shock diet, but Willy hasn't noticed. I noticed that you've lost a bit of weight. I don't think you, know. you have. Yeah, I you have. have. Uh, interestingly enough, it's... Um... Interestingly enough, I've taken off like 10 pounds, which is nearly a stone well. It's a lot of weight not to notice. That's good. It's yeah. good. I know. I'm looking good, darling. That's a bit old. I can't eat that. Oh, you're not serious. It's too old. See you later. You know this diet that you're on? Yeah. There's nothing in the fridge. When I get in What's the that... matter with that? Nice okay, lunch, I Diego. See... I don't... You know, I don't really eat Parsley. cheese. Parsley. Well, you got a piece of cheese in your hand. Well, that's the only thing that's in the fridge. I know, it? darling, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Tanya's on a diet because she's a little bit, you know... What, Will? <laughs> it goes when we first did it in Venezuela, and you... Do you not remember we used to have a cup? We used to have breakfast. We had a big cup, chocolate, cup yeah, of yeah. hot chocolate, and then no-one would be hungry. And it would keep <laughs> you going. And you'd so, walk and up it would keep you going. So it was all a joke. Whenever we'd go walking, we'd do sneaky hot chocolates while we'd go up the mountain not give anybody else them. Well, that's what I'm basically doing now, is hot chocolate, working out, eating good detox kind of food, white meat, salads, vegetables, fish, that sort of thing, and having a couple of choc shots a day, which is great for any... Chocoholic. If I was having a Mars bar for breakfast, I don't think I'd be losing weight. But this is cacao, and it's got very little sugar, and you're mixing it with water, not milk, so you've got no dairy in it. And the health benefits of it are huge, as, and as we were saying, you know, that it takes away your appetite completely. I've taken off 11 pounds in about 17 days, um, and I drink it for breakfast, and at 4 o'clock it's a pick-me-up in that weak hour where you feel hungry and you would ordinarily have a quick few mini-rolls. You just have a choc shot, and it takes you right through to supper. I was telling to Tanya last night, we've got to try and reach the general public with a product that, that they'll understand perhaps more, and that would be, you know, a hot chocolate, you know, a chocolate drink. Right now, um, I've got a cash flow problem, so I'm having to go back to the bank next Wednesday. My accountant thinks uh, that it might be tricky. You know, but sometimes bank like security, don't they? So I'm going to have to find, perhaps, find some kind of security. Tanya doesn't have any real security either. It's not, you don't, you have to have a house, and we don't have a house. Things are tight. I mean, you know, I suppose it's like that for all people trying to get new business off the ground. We had the bailiffs round a couple of days ago. It's freaked her out, yeah. I mean, she was in tears. I mean, you know, it was upsetting. The tough reality of life back in the UK seems a long way from life in Venezuela, where the dream of making and selling the best chocolate in the world was born. Here's where Willie developed his belief that pure cocoa can improve the taste of the most unlikely recipes. I don't like that cheese. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to make some coconut milk and then with the coconut milk, we'll cook the fish. And then I'll put a little bit of water in it, just a couple of glasses, and I'll just gently squeeze it. And do you see how the milk is all coming out? OK, so now I'm going to leave that there for a minute. And I'll just peel this onion. Now, I'll put two or three cloves of garlic, because that just adds a little bit of flavour. Some... You've got a bit of something in your eye, have you, darling? Just be careful you don't get more sand. OK. A splash of... nice splash of olive oil. You're going to like this. So I'll put a few cumin seeds, a nice tablespoon. I'll put a, a tablespoon and a half of coriander seeds. And then I'm going to put a few tablespoons of fresh cocoa beans. And I think I'll just add the seeds of a chilli. A mild, mild chilli. And I'll just roast these herbs. Ah, oh, and there's the chocolate. Can you smell the chocolate? The cacao, yeah? 
Can you smell that now? That smells good, doesn't it? Right, what you've got to do, Will, is you've just got to gently go like that. I'll, do, I'll hold it and you grind it. OK, yeah, grind it. Do you see how that's grinding? So now we're going to strain the cocoa. Will, can you hold that for me, darling? So, Danny? considering two ways to sell their cocoa to the public. The 100% bar as an ingredient in sweet and savoury cooking and as a chocolate drink, the Choc Shock. But both will be difficult new ideas to get across to the public and he's contacted Selfridges to see if he can interest them. It's Willie the Chocolate Man. Um, I'm, I'm back from Venezuela um, and need to talk to you guys. Right. W when you say soon, w when would that be? The meeting at Selfridges will be decisive for Willie's business and he needs his product to look as finished and professional as he can if he's to make the right impression. A large order now could be significant for Willie and the family's future. I'm going to call the 100% bar Venezuelan black. You know, Venezuela is famous for the best beans in the world, so you've got to have Venezuela in there and black, because black is slick, Venezuelan black. You know, and then the cat, well, the cat was, is the king of the jungle in the farm, so it was natural we'd put the king of the farm on the label as well. We need to know how wide is the sticky tape um, and does it go on the one that sticks down or the, the underneath one or the one on the top? Was it double-sided? Yeah, it's stressful because, you know, you know, people are going to pick this up, it's on the shelf and it's got to catch their eye and they've got to pick it up and go, yeah, and it's got to put the message across in an instant. If it's on the top one, it's impossible to make a mistake when it comes down, if you know what I mean. Uh, no, we didn't get to that, but I'm, that's why, I mean, there's just these... Sample. Did she send a sample? To have 30,000 labels, it's three grand. I mean, you know, plus VAT. So, yeah, I mean, it's a big spend. Three grand's a big spend. Perfect. Thanks, thanks, Beryl. You can't talk to me when I'm Sorry, oh, well, look then. You, you know, can, I can go, go where? I'll go and meet you on Monday. Well, well, you can go. I'm free on Monday. Talk to me like because I don't understand, darling, why you're talking. To be done. Yeah, but darling, we don't need to discuss that right now when I'm speaking on the phone. I'm just about to sign off to say this is what we're going to go from. Even now, I'm sure if I waited another couple of weeks, I'd find that there was other stuff I could have done. But you've got to say at some point, I'm going with this. Um, otherwise, it's never going to happen. Oh, Tony. Sorry, I'm so stressed. <laughs> OK. All right. the day of the crucial meeting in London. If his dream that was born four and a half thousand miles away 12 years ago in Venezuela is to be realized, Willie has to persuade retailers that his is the best cocoa in the world. And with money running out fast, he needs some good news. I'm on my way to Selfridges uh, to see if uh, I can get the Selfridge group to stop my 100% bar. I made them a chocolate cake. I'm hoping that I'm going to seduce them a little bit with the flavor. Remember, I made the cow for his chocolate cake in Venezuela. So I'm going to make cloud for his chocolate cake. I'm going to melt my couple of hundred grams of chocolate with my 200 grams of butter in a bain marie.
I'm going to put a third of my 200 grams of sugar in with the eggs and blend it. While my ban marie is melting my chocolate and butter, I'm going to quickly prepare the tin. So I've got an American friend who I taught how to make this cake. He reckoned he'd make it and go to dinner parties and that all the guys would get the hump with him, you know, because all the girls would fall in love with him. He reckoned it was his party trick. I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'm just going to put the paper line, the tin, bottom and top. I've got a 25 centimetre tin in there. Now, I've got my chocolate and my butter beautifully melted now. I'm going to drop in 100 grams of almonds. And now I'm going to fold in my tripled in size eggs and sugar. And that's really... And I'll just put that straight in like that. It's a cake for all occasions, really. And easy. No mess, no going wrong, no folded fluffed eggs, no nothing that can go wrong, and into the oven. And the temperature is 160 degrees for about 25 minutes. See you. Good to see you too. Have a seat. Thank you. And um, so we're here to talk about the chocolate project. Yes. And now I've brought you some samples. So there's three different bars. There's two single bean and there's one single estate. Yeah. And so just, so just remind me, this is the this, this is, is the range. Hundred percent. This is okay. the range. And this is from the production. This is from the factory. This, this is, is from the factory. So yeah. these are not. This isn't a these kitchen are, sample. This, this is, is not a kitchen sample. These are these are made in the the proper roaster. Um, so tell me about its use. You know, how's well, an ingredient? Right. I mean, okay. it's an ingredient. It's for every discerning chef. It's for anyone who actually wants to cook. Anyone who's truly interested in the different flavors of chocolate. Yeah. Um, this is an almond wow. cake. Uh, it's got a truffle mix on top. The same truffle mix you could roll into truffles. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I'm also trying to push to people that the recipes are on the back, how to make this cake, how to make the truffle mix, and how to make a great hot chocolate. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, I'm trying to get people into the idea, the concept of using chocolate as an ingredient. But I suppose my nervousness is how do we get the message of, you know, uh, its use? What else can we do together to kind of give it real good promotion and, you know... Well, I mean, I think I'd be willing to come to the store and do a tasting. If we could have some kind of launch, I could perhaps make some things like truffles for yeah. people to give out yeah. so your customers I think that, taste Yeah, I think in our experience, our customers just love the interaction with producers, right. you know, and if you're prepared to put in that investment... Absolutely. In fact, and you've got a great name, haven't you, really, for this chocolate, haven't you? <laughs> That'd be fun. Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Should we try the cake? Yeah, no legs. Okay. So this was made by... Myself. By yourself. Yeah. Good man. Chocolate at the moment, you know, is going through a fabulous renaissance. I think this is just taking that hunger, that interest in chocolate to a new level. I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's one of the best chocolate cakes in the world. You do? Not just because I've made it. I mean, I've played around a lot with, with chocolate. I think it's very exciting. My initial reaction is very positive, and I would like to think that uh, I'll engage the right people to, to say yes, and, and it will be a positive news story for, for Willie and, and, importantly, for our customers in the new year. The texture is fantastic, and the flavour is a real strong, but it's not, over, it's not sweet. No. It's just a beautiful, pure chocolate flavour. Mm. That's a fabulous. Fabulous texture, mm. and very flavorful. I think they see great potential about it as an ingredient. I can see them bringing in chefs, that shop, famous chefs, celebrity people that, that, that come into their store, that shop in their store, using the product. I think they can probably maximize on some publicity I haven't thought about. No, and I think there's a definite interest, there's a kudos. I mean, this is the greatest department store in Britain, and I think I've got the greatest product. So they're you know, there could be a marriage in Oxford Street. But if the marriage produces an order, Willie's going to have to work hard to fulfil it, 
And the reality back in the factory is that his machinery is not making the cocoa as smooth and refined as it has to be. I'm massively disappointed. I, you know, after all the work I've done, I thought that it was going to be a simple, put it in through the grind, it would come out fine, but it's not. It's not grinding fine enough. I've reset the stones, I still can't get it to find, grind fine enough, and I decide I've got to buy a refiner as well. There's a possibility of a refiner in Germany, and then there's also a machine in, in Spain. Now, the guys in Spain, they're willing to sell a pair, a new grinder and a, a refiner that work together. Um, it's been out of service for a while, so I'm going to jump on a plane, have a quick look. I mean, for the, for the same price as I could buy the refiner in Germany, I can get both in Spain. So Spain could be a real good option. I've got the farmer's market organised, I've got a stall, I've got the kids. Um, it's a bad time to go, but there's nothing I can do. If I don't go now and I go after the weekend, it'll delay another week, they won't ship, and I'll get it in two weeks' time. Whereas if I go today, I can have it next week and I could be in production. You have to hold your finger still. Ah, what are you going to do? Ah! What was that? <laughs> Seatbelts on. So, tell me about your day at school, Evie. What did you do? I Something fun? Well, I get two peas by myself in the loo. Good girl. By myself. Good girl. By <laughs> anybody to help me. We're going to make fairy cakes, hot chocolate, and everything for this show at Columpton. You excited about it? We've got um, the farmer's market on Saturday, and it's Thursday night today, so we're making everything that we can for this market to basically put the product out there and have people try it. Who wants to make the chocolate icing? Me! OK. 250 of flour, go. Now. Guys, guys. What are you doing? Oh, guys. Listen, how many eggs are in there? I don't know. OK, out of the way, this is it. Let me just check. Eve, what are you doing? It's all rather um, exhausting. Willie's in Spain. He's in Madrid. He's been hunting two machines all weekend, in, one in Germany and one in Madrid. I found myself saying, get the machine that works and that's just ready, you know. It's just going to do what it wants to do to the cocoa. Movia, la refinadora. The other side of me realises that the authenticity of the factory is such a major part and parcel of the whole branding of this chocolate. And it has to be an old machine. And that's the one in Madrid, so that's the one he's gone to see. Oh, okay, so. No, 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 no
the other two thirds of my sugar in with the butter and chocolate. I'm now going to put 100 grams of ground almonds. You know, some people might put a touch of vanilla essence. Just a tiny bit. Right. Eggs, triple in size. We've got our mix here that's now nicely melted. So, now I'm going to fold in the rest of the egg mixture. I'm trying to keep a little bit of the air. OK, so we're looking good there. Look. Now, the ramekins, just... I've got my old, my old butter casing. I'm just going to give it a little rub. I'll give each one a little go. So, I'm going to cook them at 160 for about 15, 20 minutes. So, we're going to fly in. What are we going to buy? Can you remind me? Pecans. Yeah. What else? Eggs. Daddy keeps calling. Do you think that's him again? Yeah. Oh, no, God, not answering. But he's forgotten something else. So I'm going to make some chocolate pecan pie. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm not sure how it's all going to go at Clumpton. So I'm thinking pie, it'll be sticky. So I'll break them in easy to, you know, to my, to my strong chocolate. So, I'm just going to quickly separate my eggs. I'm only after the yolks. Make a nice, rich pastry. So, I've got some nice plain flour. I'm going to put some caster sugar and a little butter. And I'm going to mix them all together. No, Bentley! Get out, you silly boy. You'll squash all the food. Out, Bentley! I'm hoping Tanya's going to come and help me. You know, I'm not sure. She might still be grumpy with me. Right, so now I've got that. Now, you want your pâté sucré sticky, but not wet, OK? So, there you go. Now, I would refrigerate it so it makes it a little bit firmer, so I can roll it out and put it into its dish. And I'll just put it into a little bit of cling film, put it straight into the freezer, onto the rack. Now I'm going to make the middle, OK, my little, my little pecan mix. I'm going to melt my chocolate. Now I'm going to put some butter. Will, I know we've got so much to do and we're probably going to have to cook all night, but I'm going to make a sign because I think we need one, don't you? Yeah, do the artist. I'll leave that to you. Well, I know, but what do you want it to say? It obviously well, has I just to say, say chocolate. Chocolate, Venezuelan black, or Venezuelan black. What is it? Chocolate. Okay. That's the way I do it. Right, I've got my caster sugar. I've got what have I got? 75 grams. I'll put my maple. Now the maple syrup is going to is going to be great. And it goes. I'm going to heat these together and dissolve the sugar in the maple syrup. Uh, eggs. I'm going to pop my, my maple syrup now and my caster sugar into my chocolate mix. Stir that in first. Right, I've got that nicely mixed. Final beat on the eggs. In it goes. Oh, yeah. So I've got nice... This is going to be very juicy. It's nice and liquidy. Here get the nuts. It's ready to go. That's my filling. 
Now, I've left that, I made that quite flat, and I can feel it's gone quite firm. Now, let's hope we can get away with it. I'm going to blind bake this first, and I want to make sure I've got an even pastry. So... Then I'm going to put some rice on top. This will hold down the pastry. So I'm going to bake it at 160. 10, 15 minutes. Pop that back in the oven. Tanya and Willie work late into the night to prepare for the farmer's market tomorrow at Columpton. So far, the experts have been positive, but this is the first chance to try out their latest recipes on the public. It's another critical moment in the project. No, but we need to cook it. Yeah, really looking forward to Columpton Market. I'm carrying something. Let's both get both of you in the bag. Let's go. Let's go. Willie, we have to go now. The punters are showing up in half an hour. No, I'm not, I haven't got a jacket. Yet. Where's the green felt jacket? I don't know. Forget it. Put on anything, Willie, because we haven't. There are going to be punters there already. <laughs> don't, darling, don't do anything wrong because it's driving crazy. <laughs> there was Willie, don't worry. Got my phone. <laughs> Grab mine, it's on the side. By the books. Got it. Don't, darling. Where's mine? Don't get it. On the bookshelf. Mine. Well, it doesn't matter. Where's the dog? Is he not in the house? Mommy! <laughs> darling. Better buy it! He's in the kitchen. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Willie, keep your elbows to yourself. Have you got your seatbelt on? You look too smart. Should I just get a jersey? Just get in the car. You look great. Put All your right. belts on, guys. I need to go. Oh, it's door open. Door open. Oh, I didn't notice. Stop. Uh. <laughs> Willie needs to see me. Why is it that door open? Because you didn't I shut it. Are we ready? Rock and roll. Let's go. Put your, put your belt on. So please put your belt on. So Let's you know. go. Let's go, 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 well. We've still got to get there. I'm just worried about the stuff on the roof flying on. What do you mean? It's not tied on. It is tied on properly, right? Willie? OK, carefully. That's bound to happen. Don't get a nosebleed. For God's sake, yeah. Willie. Have you got a nosebleed? Really? Oh, he's got such a little nosy. TV. It was an accident, yeah? It was an accident. You sing that song. You... Oh, my gosh! We've got Teddy in the cake. <laughs> Don't throw anything Look, else forward, careful. guys. Imagine what would happen if we had a crash. Where would the cake go? In your face. My face or Mummy's face? Mummy's face. She'd be cake on her face, yeah? For various reasons, I've done it. I mean, you could be market research. You know, I've moved into the area in, in the factory sense, and it's good to get that kind of reaction. It's invaluable. You know, supermarkets do these focus groups, but you can't pay love or money to pick old and young, you know, out of the crowd to try your products and give you honest opinions. A small piece. <laughs> Darling, are you ready? Oh Here we God. go. Oh! What do you think of the flavour? Very nice. It's very nice? Could I tempt you? <laughs> oh, I don't need temperance. Oh, great. <laughs> Remarkably, you might think it's cupcake country, but when presented with a Venezuelan black cloud forest cake, who can say no? And that's what went. You've gone to heaven. You've gone to heaven. <laughs> Should I do that? So you don't fight. <laughs> and it's made with one of these. Well, actually, it's made with four of these. They're ingredients. They've got no sugar, obviously. You add your own sugar. Everybody got the message. I think everyone got the product. They understood right from the beginning, it's an ingredient, this is what you can make from the products. 
Um, and hey, you know, these are the different things. I'm picking out people in, you know, that I've seen today in my market research that have totally got the understood it totally. Well, I think we ought to try and have a hot chocolate. Yes. A hot chocolate yes. to start oh, with. That. <laughs> a hot chocolate to start with. Instead of a coffee in the morning. Yeah. You know, a hot chocolate. So it's got theobromine, which makes you go. Sometimes you get hot chocolate with really milky and everything. No, no, there's no milk in that. No. As far as the hot chocolate was, was concerned, was that small children loved it. Uh, and that, that's quite curious, because you imagine children will only eat these branded, sweet, sickly things. But in actual fact, when, when offered and tempered in the right surroundings with cakes, they went for it and liked it. Do you like... Um, a chocolate souffle with cream. They're amazing. Yeah? <laughs> I'm so pleased you've come today. It's good, isn't it? Who needs men? Yeah, let's be honest. How's that? Mm, that is heavenly. Good, isn't, isn't it, it good? Money. Fantastic. What's the best chocolate pudding you've ever had in your life? Oh, look at those words! <laughs> it was good. I reckon that um, I delivered the message. I think well, probably what people found most fascinating was that it's actually happening here in Columpton, certainly not far from here in, in Uffcombe. But, you know, if these guys get it, you, I, I slightly feel ashamed of myself if I thought the cupcakes would go. We actually might have been left with some cupcakes, where, whereas you know, the actual almond cake, the, the mousses, the hot chocolate, that's what flew. Lying ahead are some mixed reactions as Willie tries out his product on some friends and experts. It's absolutely amazing. All I could think of was, hang on a second, we've got the best chocolates in the world here, and I've made this cake. Does this product actually have to make you any money? I just don't feel that the market is educated enough yet. Stop, 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 stop. Right, is he going to carry these in or have we got to do it? He's a bit stressed. Let's do it ourselves. <laughs> That's crack. That's next Sunday at nine. If tonight's show's given you a chocolate craving, indulge at channel4.com slash chocolate. The lives of a group of unconnected people collide in our movie premiere, the multi-Oscar winning crash, next on four.